Hello and welcome to the Moxie tutorial series. This lesson is the introduction to THB or total hemoglobin. There are two sections in this presentation. The first will cover the definition of THB. This is a technical discussion on precisely what THB means, what factors contribute to the reading, and what can be inferred from the measurement. The second section will describe the four different types of THB reactions that are commonly observed in athletes. THB is an abbreviation for total hemoglobin, and it's a non-absolute measure of the density of hemoglobin and myoglobin in the tissue. A lower density of hemoglobin and myoglobin will cause a lower THB reading, and a higher density will cause a higher reading. Recall from the SMO2 lesson that hemoglobin is in the red blood cells and myoglobin is in the muscle tissue. It's very important to distinguish between total hemoglobin and blood hemoglobin concentrations. Total hemoglobin is the measure of the amount of hemoglobin and myoglobin per unit volume of tissue. This is different than blood hemoglobin concentrations, which is a measure of the amount of hemoglobin per unit volume of blood. Higher or lower blood hemoglobin concentrations is just one factor that can contribute to higher or lower THB. Next, let's look at the four major factors that contribute to the THB reading. First is blood hemoglobin concentration, which we've already mentioned. The higher the concentration of hemoglobin in the blood, the higher the THB reading will be. Second is the fat layer thickness. Fat has a low density of blood vessels and no myoglobin. This is why fat has a whitish appearance with thicker fat layers making the THB reading lower. Third is the density of myoglobin in the muscle. Myoglobin is what makes red meat look red. Hemoglobin and myoglobin appear the same to the MOXIE sensor, so higher amounts of myoglobin will make the THB reading higher. Fourth is the volume of blood in the muscle. The more blood that is present in the muscle, the higher the THB reading will be. All of the other factors besides blood volume remain effectively constant for the single sensor location and over the duration of a typical assessment or workout. However, Blood volume can change rapidly and dramatically depending on the muscle tension and vascular tone. These changes can help us infer what's going on with blood flow. The primary use for the THB metric is to indicate changes in blood volume. It can't measure blood volume in any kind of absolute sense because there are many factors that are not known, absolutely. But it is useful to tell if blood volume is simply going up, down, or staying the same. If you move the sensor to a different position on the same athlete with a different fat layer thickness, the magnitude of the THB reading will be different. However, once the sensor is fixed in a location, it's still useful to assume that any changes in THB reading are due to changes in blood volume. Let's move on and look at the four types of blood volume reactions that can be identified using THB. Compression, outflow, and return venous occlusion and recovery, arterial occlusion and recovery, and vasodilation or vasoconstriction, which is also known as vascular tone. Compression outflow is the term used to describe the reaction when muscle tension squeezes blood out of the muscle. This is a fairly rapid response occurring over 5 to 30 seconds after the onset of muscle tension. When the tension is released, the blood returns just as quickly as it was squeezed out. The fast response time is because this is purely a mechanical reaction. Compression outflows typically occur at lower tensions. We often say less than 30% of maximum voluntary contraction force. But the actual tension can vary considerably on this scale. This graph shows the THB response on a cyclist vastus lateralis during an intermittent loading test. The vastus lateralis is part of the quadriceps muscle group in the thigh and is commonly measured in cycling assessments. The horizontal axis is time, and the vertical axis shows THB on the left scale and power on the right. The compression outflow is observed every time the cyclist goes from a resting to a working load. This is the rapid drop in THB. The compression return is observed as a rapid increase in THB every time the load is stopped. A venous occlusion occurs when the muscle tension becomes high enough to restrict blood outflow, but it still allows blood to flow into the muscle. In this case, 
THB increases slowly over tens of seconds to minutes as the muscle pumps up with blood. The recovery from a venous occlusion is much faster. When the muscle tension is released, the excess blood quickly leaves the muscle and the THB returns to its level before the occlusion. Venous occlusions typically occur in muscle tension ranges of around 30 to 70% of maximum voluntary contraction force, but again, there is a wide variability here. This graph shows the SMO2 and THB response on a cyclist's vastus lateralis while alternating between a load for five minutes on with one minute of rest. The shaded areas indicate the rest with time on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis showing SMO2 on the left and THB on the right. During the five minute load, the THB slowly and steadily increases. As soon as the load is released, the THB quickly returns to its value during the previous rest. This long, steady increase followed by a quick return is the signature indication of a venous occlusion. It is possible that other factors can cause a long, steady increase in THB, so you must also consider the magnitude of the muscle tension and look for some type of drop in THB when the muscle tension is released. Sometimes the venous occlusion is superimposed on a muscle compression. In this case, the THB may not actually drop after the muscle tension is released, but the magnitude of the compression recovery will be smaller. An arterial occlusion occurs when the muscle tension is high enough to restrict blood flow completely. Since there is no flow in or out of the muscle, the THB will become steady and show up as a plateau on the graph. When the muscle tension is released, the THB value will quickly return to its value prior to the muscle tension, just like a venous occlusion. Arterial occlusions typically require a very high contraction force, often higher than 70% of maximum voluntary contraction. Some athletes, though, may not be strong enough to cause a clear arterial occlusion even at 100% of MVC. Since arterial occlusions completely stop the blood flow while the muscle load is very high, arterial occlusions are almost always accompanied by a rapid drop in SMO2. It's possible to create an arterial occlusion with an external means such as a tourniquet without having a very high muscle tension, but this still will cause an SMO2, SMO2 drop, although less rapidly. This graph shows arterial occlusions during isometric contractions. The blue shaded areas indicate the rest between loads. Again, time is on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis will show SMO2 on the left and THB on the right. Note how the THB increases rapidly and reaches a very steady plateau while the load is maintained. Then the THB quickly returns to its value before the load. The THB plateaus, the rapid drop in SMO2, and the very low SMO2 value are typical of arterial occlusions. Vasodilation and vasoconstriction are also known as changes in vascular tone. This means that the blood vessels are opening or closing to allow more or less blood flow. The previous THB reactions were primary mechanical reactions where vasodilation and vasoconstriction are activated by chemical or neurological stimuli. Some common chemical stimulants of vasodilation are carbon dioxide and nitric oxide. When these chemicals are present in the blood, they make the blood vessels open up to allow more blood flow. The central nervous system also plays an active role in vascular tone. It causes blood vessels to dilate or constrict as a way to maintain blood pressure and to selectively direct blood flow. The reactions are controlled by smooth muscles in the blood vessels and precapillary sphincters, which can open and close. Changes in vascular tone typically occur over longer periods of time than the mechanical reactions. Usually they take tens of seconds to minutes to occur. The recovery when the load is removed is much slower than all of the muscular tension reactions. This is the primary way that the vascular tone reactions can be separated from other reactions. Typical vasodilation is observed in working muscles as the load on the muscle can cause a buildup of vasodilating substances. 
Typical vasoconstriction is observed in non-involved muscles when the central nervous system restricts blood flow to non-critical muscles in order to preserve blood flow for the brain, vital organs, and working muscles. Non-involved muscles are muscles that have a minimal use in the type of exercise that is being performed. This graph shows vasodilation in a cyclist that's being tested with 5-minute load with a 1-minute rest in between. Again, the blue shaded indicates the rest periods. Notice that the THB is increasing steadily during the loads and the increase continues from one load to the next without returning to its previous value. Also notice that the THB values during the rest period are also increasing load after load similar to the loaded values. This indicates that the increase in THB is something more than what is induced by the muscle tension. This is not a direct measure of blood flow, but we can infer that blood flow is likely increasing due to vasodilation in the muscle. This slide shows the SMO2 and THB on a deltoid muscle of a cyclist performing three Wingate tests in a row. The deltoid is considered a non-involved muscle since it is not a primary working muscle for cycling. The green shaded areas indicate where the three all-out loads were performed. The time lag of the THB responses relative to the loading is interesting, but for now, let's look at the change from the THB to the start to the end of these tests. The body constricted blood flow in the deltoid as a means to redirect it elsewhere. This is shown by the decrease in THB and it's supported by the decrease in SMO2 as well. In summary, THB, or total hemoglobin, is a non-absolute measure of the density of hemoglobin and myoglobin in the muscle tissue. THB does not measure blood flow directly, but it is used to identify four reactions that give us insight into what's going on with blood flow. Compression, venous occlusion, arterial occlusion, and vasodilation or vasoconstriction.